My name is Father Thomas Viviano. I'd like to offer you a very warm invitation and an encouragement to return to an in-person participation in Sunday Mass. During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, we were very fortunate to be able to participate in Mass virtually. But we know that nothing could ever fully take the place of actually being present for the celebration of the sacred mysteries of our faith at Mass. Therefore, Archbishop Perez decided to reinstate the obligation for Catholics to attend Mass in person again as of August 15th. Now, when we hear the word obligation, admittedly it can sound a bit legalistic. Obligation can sound simply like a law or a rule arbitrarily imposed upon us. But considering the makeup of the word obligation itself can help us to understand in a deeper way what it means to be obligated to attend Mass, and also the importance of a return to an in-person fulfillment of that obligation. Now, the word obligation comes from two Latin words, from ob, which means to, and ligare, which means to bind. So, to be obligated implies a, a binding to, a tie, or a strong connection to somebody or something. So, let's consider some examples of certain obligations we're all familiar with in life. A husband, for example, and a wife are obligated to love and to be faithful to each other. Parents are obligated to love and to provide for their children. Children are obligated to obey and to respect their parents. Now, none of us would say that these obligations are external, arbitrarily imposed laws. It would hardly be love to say that a man is obligated to love his wife in fidelity if that obligation meant nothing more than the following of a rule. Rather, an obligation in its deepest sense refers to the observance of our rightful duty to another person, which naturally flows from our relationship to that person. You know, as humans, we are all bound to each other to different persons in certain relationships. And the duties that flow from those relationships are not arbitrarily externally imposed. Rather, those relationships themselves imply or demand certain duties in order for the healthy sustaining of those very relationships. And when those duties are observed, the binding or the ties of those relationships, they're strengthened and they're deepened. Now, how does obligation thus understood pertain to our duty as Catholics to attend Sunday Mass? Well, in the Incarnation, when the Son of God assumed a human nature, God bound humanity to himself and himself to humanity. And as Catholics baptized into Christ, we have all received the privilege and the grace to enter into that relationship of being inextricably bound to God. Being bound to us, God provides us with his love, his wisdom, and his grace to attain heaven if we are faithful to him. And our being bound then to God, well, we are obligated to render him praise, worship, and thanksgiving for those blessings. And it is at Holy Mass, where this mutual exchange of sanctification and praise between God and humanity is most perfectly realized. Therefore, we have the duty flowing from this obligation, this being bound to God in that relationship, to participate in Mass on Sundays. And the more faithfully we observe this duty of participating in the Mass, the stronger and deeper our binding to God will be. In fact, St. Thomas Aquinas describes religion in these very same terms of a binding. As, as Catholics, we know that the Mass is at the heart of our religion. And the word religion, says St. Thomas, can be understood to come from the Latin re ligare, to rebind or to be bound again. So God has established that for the good of our souls, each week through our participation in the sacred mysteries at Mass, we be bound again to God, that our binding to him may be renewed so that our relationship to him be strengthened and deepened. And this rebinding to God can only happen fully and perfectly by an actual presence at the sacred mystery celebrated at Mass. To explain this, let's consider the example of a husband and father who does express his love for his wife and children, but only virtually. Now, if this man's wife and children only know this man's love through live streaming, through videos and text messages, while there will be something of a connection there, well, this could never completely substitute for the actual touch of his embrace or for the physical hearing of his voice. Like I, likewise with the Mass, 
there can be no substitute for experiencing the presence of God in a sacred space, for hearing his word of life physically proclaimed, and especially for receiving the sacrament of God's love, the Most Holy Eucharist. To be renewed in our binding to God, to know the blessing of his grace and to offer him fitting praise, worship, and thanksgiving, nothing can substitute for actually being present at Holy Mass. So I once more invite and encourage each and every one of you to return to an in-person participation in the Sunday Mass. As Catholics, this obligation flows from the incomparable grace of being bound to God in the love of Christ. May God bless you, and I hope to see you at Mass.